Uh, oh, the first thing anyway, if you want to bring it into PowerPoint, you need to go from your SOLIDWORKS store and save it as an e-drawing. Um, so you're not bringing in the SOLIDWORKS straight into PowerPoint. You have to make, save it as an e-drawing file. To do that, you just have your regular file. You don't have to change anything to the model itself. Just when you go to save it, go file, and you can see save as, and you should have an option down here in your drop-down menu for e-drawings. E Where is it up there? Have I gone by it? Oh, there it is. Yeah. So save it as an e-drawing like that. And uh, <laughs> e-drawings, save it, and that's pretty much it. You mean like so e-drawings? I'll just hit um, saving it as normal. Save. I just hit onto the desktop there. Uh, no, that isn't. Uh, desktop. So I have it already saved, right? So um, just hit save there. That'll save it to the desktop, and. When you have e-drawing, like it, yeah, have you used e-drawings before or that? Yeah. It's just a viewer, so it's it's not SolidWorks. You, you don't create or you don't model it. It's just literally something you download for free off the SolidWorks website, and like anyone can get it. So you don't have to have SolidWorks or that at all. It just allows you to view it, to section planes, to rotate it around. So it's just as a, a viewer. Um. So that's grand. Then what we do is we go into PowerPoint. Now, if you look on the internet, there's there's various descriptions of it, and a whole load of them are just wrong. This they don't work for whatever reason on kind of this version of it. But uh, to do it is really really straightforward. First of all, you need what's known as the developer tab. That's the thing that you're you're going to be missing off your own computers. It's a tab here with just extra buttons in it. So how you bring up the tab is you first of all go to file, and then down into options. Down here, so options. And if you go into the uh, customize ribbon, so the bit along the top here is our ribbon. So mm -hmm. customize ribbon, and over here you have main tabs. You scroll down and you see the developer tab there like that. So just tick that and make sure that all the other bits there are ticked anyway. So just tick developer tab and go to OK. So that will bring up the developer tab there like that. So it'll be just as part of your standard tabs along the top. Then to import it, you're not importing the file. What you actually want to do, and the thing that gets kind of confusing is that you want to bring in the, you're importing the control, right? So the actual control unit, and then you're linking it to the, the file. So you go down here to, where is it here? Uh, more controls. So it's a little symbol here with a little kind of spanner and a screwdriver. So hit more controls, and it brings up a little window. And it's as simple as just scrolling down. If you have e-drawings, and you have to have e-drawings on the computer before you do this. Um, but once you have e-drawings on the computer, it should bring in e-drawing 2015 control will be there automatically. So if I click on that, I click OK, and then I just draw a box. And that's my e-drawings control there at that. So that's not linked to any particular file at the moment. It's just the control unit itself. So if I want to link it to the file, I right click over it and I go down to the property sheet. So property sheet like so. And it brings up this window here. You can see highlighted in it is file name. There's it's empty at the moment, so I just hit the little button there. Can you see that there? Can you yeah. you just hit that button and it just allows you to browse for the file. So I'll hit the browse button there. And on my desktop there I have a little fish tank. So I click him, open him up there. You can see there's the link to it. Apply that, click OK. And um, give her a couple of seconds. For some reason it doesn't seem to always go into the file. Is that not SolidWorks or anybody brought in there don't? Um I think that was the drawings one. I'll just go back and do it again. Oh it is actually right, yeah. Delete it. Well spotting, well, spotting yeah. <coughs> So, where was yeah, it? The one there with the e oh, yeah, there, the big one of the E, yeah. So, fish tank oblique plane. You're showing me up, lads. Um, apply. <laughs> okay. And then you can see there a file name, so it links it to the actual file itself. So, I just can go out of that, close him down maybe. And you can see nothing has happened on the main screen there like that. But when I go into the PowerPoint itself, give her a second. There she is, and now I can free to rotate that. I'm free to zoom in, do whatever I want with it. Um, I can right click on it, I can have animate the view so I can have it sort of spins around. I can go, you know, I can view, I can select. Um, 
like a pan or so, you know, you can do any, you know, just general moving around. Why? <laughs> I can see him plotting down there what we're going to have there. Don't right, but that's just, yeah, it's, a, it, it's very, very strict or very straightforward. The one thing I will say to you is though, and um, you just be aware of it there now, it's not embedded in the file itself. So when you save your um, PowerPoint, yeah. it has to be able to find the file. So, well, the way I find it best is when, you, when you're creating the PowerPoint or whatever like that, have that in a folder. So let's say the PowerPoint here is plain descriptive geometry. So have a plain descriptive geometry folder. And have all your drawings in there as well. Have your file there and then have another folder with all your models in it. Put all your models into that one folder and so that at least if you move the if you move the main folder, everything is moved with it. Now it's still will probably link to the C drive. So you can get around that by right clicking here. And in your property sheet, so right click property sheet, where you have the actual link itself, the file name. If you just go back into the browser like that and just delete the C drive part of it. So at the moment it's linked to the C drive, so it's linked to my desktop. Um, so if I delete that C drive part there, um, because what happens is if you say I want to put that to a memory stick, your memory stick might be the D drive, or if you burn it to a CD, it might be the E drive. So if the letter changes, it's can't, it can't find it. Whereas if I delete the letter at the start of it and just leave the little slash, it'll be able to find it. It, it links it from the folder, not the actual. Yeah, well, you, can always, you, can, you can rename the, the drawing as well. So if you just rename the drawing, uh, drawing one, and just call it drawing one, and leave it as, uh, don't put it on the C drive, or just the drawing itself. Okay. You can import it around the place then. You can go everywhere. It'll actually move it for a yeah. bit. Oh, that's actually a clever idea, yeah. Um, but I say, just, if you do find that. Uh, why are you only saying this now? <laughs> why did you ever lose it? Yeah. Well, see, uh, do you know what? Do you know why? Wh when no, I found it, I left it in folders, but for do you some know? people have lost it. I still think it's a, and you, you still want to it still needs to be able to find the, the file yeah, and things like that. Easy. And if you've ever named file one or model one, it'll get confused as the only this you know I mean so make yeah, sure you have a distinct name for it. Yeah, I, I always have distinct names. So I like say in mine I'm doing like the limit center.